Hello, my dear students. Здравствуйте, мои дорогие студенты. Меня зовут Вероника. My name is Вероника, and I am a professional Russian teacher. And yes, of course, I am a Russian native speaker. And today, at this Russian lesson, we will talk about autumn. And I prepared this beautiful pinkish peachy notebook. Titrat. Titrat, we say in Russian, and here I wrote all the words, all the Russian vocabulary that are essential if you want to speak Russian, uh, well, if you want to speak about autumn in Russian. So let's start our Russian lesson and I am going to read all the words two times. First time slowly as a Russian teacher, so I will read very clearly and it would be very nice if you try to copy my Russian pronunciation. So just read all the words together with me out loud. It helps you to speak Russian well. And the second time I am going to read all the words fast as a Russian native speaker. So just let's start our Russian lesson. So autumn in Russian, осень, осень. And this word is very interesting because it is feminine. <laughs> Just don't let this soft, soft sign to confuse you. So, you know, if you see the soft sign in the end of any Russian word, any Russian noun, actually, it can mean a masculine gender or a feminine gender. So, осень is feminine gender. Um, and it is a noun. And if you want to make an adjective, for example, you want to say an autumn forest. So you say осенний лес. Осенний лес. So in English, you love to use noun plus noun constructions. So many foreigners, especially beginners, who just started to learn Russian, they love to say <laughs> this frequent mistake. And they say осень лес, autumn forest, but this is a mistake. You should say осенний лес. You should make an adjective. And then uh, you know that in Russian language we have three genders, masculine, feminine, neuter. So осенний лес is masculine, because лес finishes with a consonant. Then, for example, if you want to say a feminine word, you need to change the ending. For example, осеняя погода. Осеняя погода. Autumn weather. And if you want to talk about something neuter, for example, you can say something neuter. Interesting. Okay. Осеняе озеро. Осеняе озеро. Autumn lake. So you see that we frequently change the endings. This is how Russian grammar works. <laughs> okay, now let's talk about autumn um, months. Sintyabry. Sintyabry. It means September, very close to English. The next one is Aktyabry. Aktyabry. October. Ноябрь. Ноябрь. November. Yeah, so if you want to say in September, in October, in November, again you need to change the case. All the words that I read just right now. Сентябрь. Октябрь. Ноябрь. They are in nominative case, but in, if you want to say in September, you need to add the preposition V and then put the prepositional case. So, in September is V сентябре. В сентябре. And here is the example. В сентябре дети идут в школу. В сентябре дети идут в школу. Kids go to school in September, yeah. And by the way, another interesting thing, um, we use different prepositions and different cases if we talk about different things. For example, 
If you want to say in autumn, you need to use no preposition and another case. You need to use the case number five instrumental case. So you say осенью. Осенью in autumn. Yeah, so you see, we talk about seasons, we talk about months. This is very similar idea, I guess, but we use absolutely different constructions. So be very careful. And here is the example number two. Осенью птицы улетают на юг. Осенью птицы улетают на юг. So in autumn, many birds they fly away to the southern countries. <laughs> okay. Uh, the next word that I do really personally love it is бабье лето. Бабье лето. Indian summer. Yeah. So. Прямо сейчас в России бабье лето. Прямо сейчас в России бабье лето. Right now, at the moment, we have an Indian summer in Russia. Yeah, and it's amazing. It's so warm. It's a little bit foggy at night and especially in the morning. It's quite cold at night, but when you wake up and you see these golden leaves and everything is so beautiful. I do love Indian summer. Я очень люблю бабье лето. Я очень люблю бабье лето. Okay, now let's talk about another thing. Золотая осень. Золотая осень. It means golden autumn. And by the way, <laughs> I don't know how it is in your country. I heard that in America it is quite uh, beautiful, bright and vibrant colors when you have autumn. For example, I have a friend who lives in New York and he told me that it is his favorite season because it is so beautiful. But I do not like um, autumn because in Russia it's absolutely different. It rains. Idiot dorst. Idiot dorst. It is cold. Holodna. Holodna. It is very windy and the wind is very strong and cold. Duyet holodny vietir. Duyet holodny Ветер. And the sky is very gray. Небо серое. Небо серое. There is no sun. Почти нет солнца. Почти нет солнца. But sometimes we have this famous золотая осень. Золотая осень. It means golden autumn and uh, yeah this is similar to what you have in america for example when it is sunny and uh, a lot of beautiful vibrant colors yeah but normally <laughs> um after september it's very cold you know in um, autumn in russia and sometimes we even say pushkinskaya osin pushkinskaya osin most probably you already know the name and the last name of our, the most important, one of the most important uh, poets in Russia. It is Pushkin, Alexander Sergeyevich and his favorite season when he got a lot of inspiration from nature, from natural mm, environment. Yeah. So when he was very inspired to write his beautiful poems, it was autumn, осень. So when we have a very beautiful autumn, um, golden autumn, we call it Pushkinskaya осень. I think it's interesting and very beautiful idea. Okay, so now let's talk a little about colors. So the main colors <laughs> in autumn are yellow, жёлтый, жёлтый, Ой -ой -ой. 
Маруся? Нет. <laughs> Sorry. There is my cat. You see her tail. Mm. Okay. Желтый. Yellow. And we have a verb. To become yellow. Желтеть. Желтеть. Да, so in autumn uh, the trees become yellow. Деревья желтеют. Деревья желтеют. Also the same you can say about grass. Трава желтеет. Трава желтеет. Yeah, the grass becomes yellow. And another color that is very important if we talk about autumn is red this must probably you already know krasny krasny and also we have the verb to become red krasnyet krasnyet and the most autumn tree i think in my opinion is maple so in russian we say klon klon singular and plural form клёны 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 желтеют и краснеют осенью клёны желтеют и краснеют осенью so maples become red and yellow in autumn <laughs> okay so my cat jumped down <laughs> okay, um, and another color that is very important is orange, and this is very similar to what you have in English. Оранжевый. Оранжевый. By the way, this is very interesting because we do not have the verb for this color, <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know why. Okay. Mm, and by the way, most probably you see that some fall, some leaves are falling, and in Russian we say листья падают. Листья падают. Leaves fall, and this process we call листопад. Листопад. And here we have two roots. The root number one is list. List. It means a leaf, and then we have pad, pad. It means padat to fall. So lista pad. This is the name of this process. Another word that we say listia kružatsa. Listia kružatsa. It means they fall and they make some circle movement like this. Yeah, when there is no well, mm, wind, they кружатся. Да, this looks very beautiful, I think. So, one leaf, singular form, list, list. And then the plural form in nominative case is a little bit unusual or irregular, exceptional. So, we say not листы, but we say листья. Листья. I talk about leaves yeah listia okay now let's talk about clothes that you need to wear in autumn at least in russia <laughs> um перчатки перчатки gloves шарф шарф scarf палито палито don't know it in English, so I will put the translation on the screen. Kurtka, kurtka, jacket, plush, plush, trench coat. Okay, um, now let's talk about shoes. <laughs> in Russian, this is very important because if you don't have good shoes in autumn, it means your feet will be always wet, and there is. Mm, it is very bad, you know. <laughs> so, sapagi, sapagi. Forgot how you say it in English. I will put the mm, translation here. But forty, but forty, 
By the way, when I uh, studied at MSU at university, it was very popular to wear but for ty, but nowadays no, it's not so popular. <laughs> I batinki. Batinki. It means boots. Mm, now let's talk about clothes like cardigans. So all of these words are interchangeable. You can use any of them and it's okay. So sweater, 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 jumper, 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 cardigan, 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 pullover, 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 kofta, kofta, mm, kofta is kind of cardigan. So all of these words you can use without any problem. You can change them because they are very similar. And of course, I couldn't forget shapka, shapka. Otherwise, you get you catch a cold without shapka in Russia. Then I already discussed that it is very um, rainy normally in Russia, so you need zont, zont. It's an umbrella. And then, you know, now I live right now at the moment, I live at my dacha in my summer house. Uh, so we have pechka, pechka. It is a stove. So we need to put some firewoods in the stove. Drava, drava, firewoods. Okay, um, then if you live in a summer house or just in your uh, own house, you can use a fireplace. In Russian we say kamin, kamin. Then if you live in a city, of course you need центральное отопление. Центральное отопление, central heating system. So it means that when it is cold and it is a minimum temperature, then our mayor in Moscow decides to heat the houses and the central system, central heating system starts to work um, around one day in all houses. Yeah, first we put the heating system for um, hospitals, for clinics, for kindergartens and schools and then houses of course uh, and by the way <laughs> every summer in Russia each summer um, we need to check how our pipes work for the central heating system so we um, our government turns off the hot water in summer for one or two weeks it's a nightmare it's very bad but Otherwise, we cannot understand how our pipes work in winter. So in summer, sometimes uh, for two weeks, we do not have a hot water. So yeah, now you know. Tell me about the story, uh, the situation in your countries. If you have a central heating system or you use another system, very interesting for me. Um, there are some birds, forgot how you call them in English. Um, Juravli, we say. Juravli. I will put the translation. Um, the next word is a very um, American word, I guess. Uh, tikva. Tikva. This is how we call a pumpkin in Russian. And this is very autumnal, mm, autumn vegetable. Okay. Um, yeah, and I wanted to add some words if you want to talk about autumn weather. So you can say cloudy, облачно, облачно. And this is an adverb and you can use um, a noun. So singular form is облака, облака, cloud. And plural form облака, облака clouds. Осенью очень облачно, обычно. Осенью очень облачно, обычно. It is very cloudy in autumn usually. Yeah, 
now there is almost no sun and lots of clouds. <laughs> okay. Um, and if you forgot the word облачно, cloudy, you can use another synonym and you can say пасмурна. Пасмурна. The same meaning. Absolutely. Okay, okay. Yeah. And by the way, we have two different um, nouns. So облака, it's a cloud. And then we have a word туча. Туча, it's a cloud with a thunder. So when you see туча, it is very gray, it's very big and <laughs> puffy, I think you say. Very big, enormous, gray, dark gray or almost black. And you definitely know it will be raining. So in general, if you talk about rain, you just say дождь, дождь. But in Russia, we have quite a lot of different types of дождь, and let's discuss some of them. You can say ливень, ливень for a very heavy and intensive uh, rain, or you can say, for example, льет как из ведра. Льет как из ведра, the same meaning, kinda it's pouring. Or if it is a very small um, drizzling, I think you say in English, um, rain, you can say марасит, a little bit, чуть-чуть, марасит. Or another vocabulary, <laughs> it's very advanced level, you can say накрапывает. Накрапывает. It's just some little drops of uh, water from the sky fall, fall, yeah, and then starts the rain. So this beginning of the process you call накрапывает. Okay, okay. And now let's talk about some activities that you can make in autumn. So you can собирать грибы. Sabirat gribi to collect mushrooms. I adore it. <laughs> Every day, каждый день я собираю грибы в лесу. Каждый день я собираю грибы в лесу. Every day I collect mushrooms in our beloved forest. Then you can sabirat. Ягоды, собирать ягоды, to collect berries, собирать урожай, собирать урожай, to collect harvest, yeah, um, then we can talk also about two important, um, how you say, holidays, so in America, this is День Благодарения, День Благодарения, Thanksgiving Day, I think it is in autumn, <laughs> if I'm not correct, just correct me in the comments below. And in Russia we have Первое Сентября, Первое Сентября, the first day of September, this is a big uh, holiday because all the kids, all the pupils, all the students, they go to school. And also we call this holiday as День Знаний, День Знаний, Day of Knowledge. Yeah, and all the kids, they took a bunch of flowers, enormous bunch of big flowers, and uh, some chocolate, some sweets, um, and they go to school to meet his, the, their friends and their teachers. This is a big holiday in Russia. Okay, and the last word that I would like to discuss, almost the last, is hibernation. So in Russian we say спячка. спячка. It comes from the word spat, to sleep. And we say kinda to fall asleep, to hibernate. We say впадать в спячку. впадать в спячку. Животные впадают в спячку. So, um, animals hibernate, yeah? Okay, um, and some another adjectives that are useful if you want to talk about autumn in Russian. So, яркий, 
яркий, it means bright or vibrant, грустный, грустный, it means sad, and normally <laughs> there is not a lot of sun in Russia at this time, at this season of the year, and people start to be not so active, and a little bit more tired, and sleepy, and sad, yeah, a little depressive in Russia. <laughs> okay, and another word that I would like to finish with, it is уютный, уютный, cozy. So, yeah, it's very cozy, очень уютно, yeah, when, for example, it is raining outside and you read an interesting book under the blanket with a cup of hot chocolate, it's very cozy. Когда за окном идет дождь, а ты читаешь книгу под одеялом и пьешь горячий шоколад, это очень уютно. Когда за окном идет дождь, а ты читаешь книгу под одеялом и пьешь горячий шоколад, это очень уютно. So I hope now you knew some new Russian words and I hope that this Russian lesson was interesting and useful for you.